Hello, welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm Sherry Duckworth, and joining me now is Mr. Don Herring. He is uh, Don Herring Jr., Vice President and General Manager of Don Herring Mitsubishi. Thank you so much for coming to talk with us today. Thank you very much, Sherry. I'm excited to be here and happy to talk with you. Well, it's exciting to have you here to talk about the future of electric automobiles. When I say that, I immediately think of the Jetsons, and I can't help myself uh, <laughs> growing well, up in that time period. <laughs> well, sure, and, and it's exciting. They, they are futuristic, and when we were kids, the Jetsons were the, the futuristic thing, yeah. and it's uh, it's something that's taking over. We've seen uh, in uh, recent years uh, hybrids have been getting a lot of press and a lot of attention, and uh, uh, we're going to see something else that's going to be even more exciting. We're going to see full electric cars that are more than just golf carts. A couple of years ago, if you got an electric car, you thought of a little golf cart that you took on the on the golf course made a little whir sound. Yes. We've got electric cars coming out now in the, in the next couple of years that will do freeway speeds, do 80 miles an hour, get up on the freeway fast, haul your groceries, haul four people. They have ranges up to 100 miles so that they're actual usable cars. It's something that you can plug in at night and the next day you can drive it to work, drive it to lunch, drive it to the grocery store, and, and it's a usable vehicle. That's so interesting. When we hear right now about hybrids and, and going green and um, the electric cars, we can't help but think about Hollywood, too. You know, it's kind of the big thing and promoting green and doing what we can for the environment. Um, so I'm sure in that aspect, um, you know, it obviously grabs people's attention to hear more about it. Um, so tell us kind of, you know, with Hollywood, it's probably easier for them to be, we think, to buy as many of them as they'd like. And price is usually a huge issue for those of us, you know, normal people who aren't on the big screen every day. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the price range for these, is it going to be reasonable for just the everyday Joe or the everyday mom to go out and grab one of these? Well, Sherry, I think you make a great point. Uh, a lot of the hybrids in the past have had huge premiums and you didn't get enough gas mileage uh, improvement to justify the huge premium. So for the average person, you didn't see them rushing out to buy the hybrids because they look at the hybrid and they look at the gas model and say, well, the gas model gets pretty good gas mileage. And uh, for the difference in the, in the price, I could buy a lot of gasoline. And uh, what we're seeing now is uh, we've got an electric car, Mitsubishi's iMeve comes out next year. Uh, after the uh, federal rebate, it'll be $22,000. Well, all of a sudden, that's in the price range that people can afford. And something even more exciting is the, there's a new type of hybrid coming out. What we've seen in the past has been what they call a parallel hybrid. It had an electric motor driving the car. It had a gasoline motor driving the car. And it was pretty redundant. They're both doing the same thing. So you didn't get as much efficiency. There's something called a series hybrid. And the railroads have already gone to this. They had to to save money. And I think one of the freight train companies used to have an advertisement on television saying they can move a ton of freight 436 miles on a single gallon of fuel. The way a series hybrid works, it's an electric vehicle, but it has a gasoline generator on it. So now all of a sudden you can drive that car across the country. Wow. And the gas mileage is not just a little bit better. You're, we're going to see cars that get over 100, over 200 miles per gallon. Well, that was going to be my next question because... I'm sorry. I didn't no, no, it. it's okay. <laughs> hey, you know more about this than I do, so you know what we need to talk about. But that is something that was very, um, you know, makes us curious about them because we heard about how great they are and how they're so great for the environment, but we could only, like, go within our neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. we couldn't go on road trips with them. But that, like you said, is changing. So how is that going to affect, um, I guess just regular gas-powered vehicles compared to having the electric as well? I think in the future you'll see more of this series hybrid and as this technology improves. We've seen a lot of things happen recently that have made it very exciting. Uh, we've seen battery prices t get, go lower. Mm -hmm. We've seen battery technology get better. Uh, and our electric car that's coming out next year, the, the iMeve, uh, which I told you sells for 22000 it actually has different fuel cells that can be, or cells of the battery that can be replaced. You don't have to replace the whole battery. You can replace one cell inside the battery, which makes uh, uh, maintenance much less expensive. In the future, I think uh, you'll see fewer gasoline cars because this type of technology, the, the series hybrid technology, has so much application for environmentally to make the emissions lower. It has uh, the capability to make gas mileage, as I said before, You'll see cars getting, uh, we've got a car coming out uh, in, I think it's two years. 
seven passenger, full size SUV, 113 miles per gallon. So it's not the little matchbox cars it's, anymore? It's not cars the anymore. little cars anymore that don't get you out of the neighborhood. Wow, a whole SUV that's electric. That's really incredible. So in the future, we can look to see more electric cars definitely out there, yes. like you said, and less gas. Yes, that, that's the future of automobiles. And also with sports cars. You'll see Porsche coming out with hybrids, and you'll see lots of the, the high-end sports cars because the electric motor has instant torque, which means it can get those, the motor can turn the wheels much faster immediately, and the gas motor can come on. But uh, you'll see a lot of hybrids in the future. It's amazing to hear the changes. Um, we were talking about maintenance. Um, obviously, this is going to change uh, <laughs> a lot of the way that we have all the shops out there, you know, bring our car in and, you know, same issues over the years usually. So we're going to have to have a complete overhaul out there and shops that are, you know, fixing cars. How do you see this affecting, um, you know, that particular industry? It's going to be a big change for us, and, and, and we're in that industry too. And so yes, our, tech, our technicians are a little concerned because we're talking about cars now that need no oil changes. When you're talking about the fully electric car, uh, the car needs no oil changes, doesn't use any gasoline, uh, and those are some of the maintenance items you do on a regular basis. And those things go completely away. Some things, your air conditioner system will be similar, you need power steering, power brakes but the car's reliability overall should be much higher. So how long do you think it'll be before we start seeing more electric cars and less gas-powered cars? Well, next year, we've got three companies that'll have electric cars on the road. And these electric cars, after uh, the government rebate, will range in price from about $22,000 for the Mitsubishi up to uh, Chevrolet's gonna have one. It's gonna be about 33, 34 after the rebate, I believe. So, uh, it's a price range where people can afford them. Uh, how fast will people adopt to it? Sometimes adopting technology is a little bit scary. Yes. But when you think about never paying for gas again and never having to pay for oil changes again, there's a huge incentive there. It, it definitely is. It starts to look very attractive when you know that you're not going to have to pay for that amount of gas, especially if eventually you're going to have a seven passenger SUV. That is going to make a huge difference in um, gas consumption, I'm sure. Um, when it comes to fueling these vehicles, obviously we're using electricity. So are we going to see, like we see gas pumps today, or are we going to see places where people go plug up their cars? How is that going to work just starting out with the new vehicles that are coming out today? I think you'll see quick charge stations, especially for a lot of, the, uh, for both the series hybrids and the full electric cars. Uh, and the quick charge stations will be able to give the, the batteries significant percentage of the charge, a majority of the charge back from dead within just an hour or so. Um, and I think you'll see employers start to put those in and people start to put those in their garage. For the most part though, I think for the average person, if I'm living in Irving, Texas, and I work in Dallas, Texas, and I drive 15 miles to work, if I get in my electric car in the, day, in the morning that has pure electric, drive to, to work, that's 15 miles, drive five miles to launch, so now I'm up to 20 miles, drive 15 miles back home, so now I'm up to 35 miles, and drive five miles to the grocery store. You know, mo most people, they're not gonna drive more than 50 miles during a day. And the cars have ranges up to 100 miles. Now, granted, that's under perfect situation. You're gonna be running your air conditioner and your radio, and you're probably not gonna see the 100 miles, but 50 miles is pretty easy. Yes. And then that night, you plug it in, and the next morning, you're ready to go again. So you literally just plug it into the wall? You can plug it into the wall at night and it's 100% ready to go in the morning. See, that's so fascinating, especially for those moms out there who are always running around crazy and, oh, we don't have time to go by and pick up gas before we drop the kids off. And there's all this craziness going on. If we just remember to charge the car at night, we're just, good to go in the morning. That's exactly right. <laughs> That saves us some time there, a trip to the grocery store, and that's good. Um, you mentioned that there's going to be SUVs, sports cars. Um, how, I guess, how, how is this going to affect, because we talked about gas consumption, what has been your response, I guess, from the, the oil industry with these vehicles? And it's a little controversial, so, you know, we won't get too deep, but just wanted to know kind of what your response has been from them along with, going along with this. You know, and I, and I don't know that uh, I've had any direct response from the oil industry, so I don't know that I can, can, can answer that question. Uh, as consumers in this country, we've done a very good job of consuming oil and gasoline, and I'm sure we will continue to do that. 
and uh, the, the, fu the future of these oil companies, and, and they've got to be in the energy business, and I think some of them are realizing that. And if they get in the energy business, and whether it's in energy production and not just oil and gas, I think they will do very well. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> That's a very good answer. I was just curious about that, if anybody had asked you about that, because um, obviously, especially right now with things that we're hearing in the news, it's something on the top of people's minds, mm -hmm. is, um, the oil industry. So this is definitely going to help the environment. That's oh, huge. Yes. So talk to us a bit about, you know, the green effects this is, that this is going to have. Well, certainly. And we've seen over the last several years, cars get so much cleaner. You know, uh, 10 years ago, you heard about low emission vehicles. And there was the ultra low emission vehicle. And there was this super ultra low emission vehicle. And today, every manufacturer, I believe, has what they call a partial zero emission vehicle. And your hybrids have that rating too. They call them partial zero because they either put out no emissions or they clean the air to where the net effect is no emissions. Uh, so the cars today, overall, even the gasoline cars, are much, much cleaner than what we saw just five and 10 years ago. But once you get to these full electric cars, you're talking about always zero emission vehicles. And living in Dallas, and I, and I grew up in Dallas, and I love Dallas, wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But uh, we do have some days when it's hot in the summer, and there's that haze around downtown, and you almost can't even see it because of the haze. Right. And uh, that's not good for us to breathe. No. And these cars are going to, uh, the more people who adopt these cars, the less emissions we're putting out there, and the cleaner this area is for our children. Well, I like that. Clean air is good. Um, now, concerning uh, long road trips, what if we're in an area where there's not anywhere to charge up our car? Um, are there any backup systems, or are we just going to have to really be good planners and plan ahead? If you're going to do a long road trip, you're not going to use the full electric vehicle. The series hybrids, which we'll be seeing on the street within the next few months, I mean, in the, over the next few years, you'll see more and more and more of these vehicles, which are the vehicles that have the onboard gasoline generators can actually generate their own electricity to recharge their batteries. And, okay. and those vehicles, those are the ones that are going to be getting, like I said, on, on uh, uh, Mitsubishi's uh, seven passenger SUV, which should be up as a 2014 year model, will get 113 miles per gallon. You've probably already heard of the, the Chevy Volt. That's the way it works. And it's rated at, I think, 200 something miles per gallon. So depending on the size of the vehicle, you'll see a lot of vehicles getting between 100 and 200 miles per gallon that are actually capable of going from here to Montana. And if you're somewhere where you don't have any electricity at all, as long as you have gasoline to put in that gasoline generator, you're going to be able to generate the power to keep going. Well, that's good for people to know. <laughs> so for now, those that are going to be coming out um, aren't going to be 100% um, electric. They'll still need the gas generator. Um, but who knows what we'll be seeing in the future. Um, it's very exciting we, you know, to think that all we have to do is plug in our vehicles. It's really neat and very exciting. Um, technology is fascinating. Isn't it? It's, it's amazing. Really wonderful. Well, Mr. Herring, thank you so much for coming to talk with us today. And uh, we appreciate Don Herring Mitsubishi and what the, they do to reach out to the community as well. So uh, thank you for coming and talking with us today. Thank you, Sherry. It's been a lot of fun. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching Join Our Town.